Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. My name is Ashley and in a previous video I showed you that we can take any basic shape within Cricut Design Space and make it into a shaker cake topper. And at the end of that video, I sneaked a little rainbow shaker cake topper and I wanted to know whether or not you wanted to learn how to make that and you do. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this absolutely gorgeous rainbow shaker cake topper. Now I would say that this, this particular project is a little bit more of an advanced project. So if you have not watched the original basic turn any shape into a shaker cake topper, you might want to go over there first, but look at how freaking cute this is. Shaker with shaker beads. We have layers. We have foam. We have a cute little back with a clear stick. I mean, holy cow. How stinking cute. And look, my nails match the theme. <laughs> All right, y'all, are you ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, so for this project, I actually ended up using just a basic rainbow design clip art found within Cricut Design Space. So what you wanna do is come over here into images and just put in rainbow. So you are gonna get a laundry list of items. I mean, there is a total of 18,000 rainbows within Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna make it easy for us and I'm gonna give you the file that I particularly used for my project. And it is going to be this cut file. So what you wanna do inside the search where we had originally put rainbow, you wanna put this number right here. And then you just wanna press the plus sign, which is adding it to Canvas. Then you want to press view. Okay, so once we have this added to Canvas, I'm not gonna resize this to the size that I need just yet. What we need to do is start building the shaker portion. So this right here is an all detached rainbow. We need to create the full outside portion where we're gonna be able to glue everything on. So what you wanna do is clicking on the entire rainbow, so the everything that's grouped. We want to come up here into offset and we want to create an offset. An offset is essentially building the shadow and I really truly am only focused on the very outside edge of this. Now I want to get rid of these like little hoops, the loop, loop, you know those things. So I'm going to come over here to this uh, squared off corner edge. You see how now everything's nice and straight? That's perfect. Okay, so the beauty of creating your own file is that you get to create it exactly the way you want it. So you can drag your mouse over to the right and make your shadow larger, or you can keep it smaller. Now I would suggest because you don't want really a really small shadow for the very end, because that would make it really hard for your shaker components to be glued to. So I definitely would keep it towards like the very, I would say about here, 0.347. You don't want it too thin, but you definitely don't want it too thick. You know what I mean? Okay, then when you have that done, you wanna make sure that welded offsets are welded and then just press apply. I want my particular offset to be white, just like I have it here. I want it to look like it's in the cloud, so I want it to be white. So with it still clicked, it turned black. I'm gonna come up here to this black color and change it over to white then click out of that. Okay, so now at this point, you have your very back portion of your shaker, and then you have your elements that are gonna start being glued onto the inside. I actually have sheets of plain cardstock in between the donuts, just so you can see the entire look of it, because you're not always going to be able to see the glitter colors, right? Okay, so we need to now build the donut portion of this. So what we wanna do is select both pieces that we have, the grouped rainbow and also that very back shadow piece, and we're gonna copy and paste, and we are gonna drag this over to the right. Okay, selecting only your copied and paste rainbow, what you wanna do is right click and press combined and then weld, and then you wanna select the shadow and the welded rainbow, and you wanna right click and press slice. So dragging down this white portion right here. Now this portion and this portion, the leftover rainbow pieces, we can delete those, we don't need them. Okay, and for this 
project, what I want to do is my very back portion and my, all my donuts, I want it to be white plain cardstock because if you remember in the previous video, anything that's gonna be hidden, you don't need to waste glitter cardstock on. So for the very back piece, let's go over here. For the very back shadow, I'm gonna turn this over into like an ivory, like a different color white just to signify to me that this is going to be white plain cardstock. Then I'm gonna come over here into my donut and I'm also gonna change that over into that weird white color because that's also gonna be cut in plain cardstock. Okay, the magic number of donuts that you need all depends on preference. I personally think that four is the magic number, however, in my assembly of this cake topper, I used plastic beads and the plastic beads are kind of thick. So I actually needed six donuts to make this particular topper. If you're using fine glitter, you're obviously going to need less donuts. It just depends on how thick of the, your insert for your glitter, for your shaker. That depends on how many donuts you end up needing. So I'm gonna create six donuts. I have one right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste, there's two. Copy and paste, there's three. And I'm just gonna select my other three donuts that I have. Copy and paste, now we have six donuts. Okay, because it starts to look very muddled and messy right now, I'm gonna Command A or select all, and I'm gonna align this to the center. Now it will look like there ain't nothing there. You have to definitely trust the process and know that we have a very back shadow that we're gonna cut in plain cardstock. We have the colors of the rainbow that you're going to need. That's going to give you the plain cardstock. Then you're gonna have your donuts. I've created six. Okay, we need the sheet of acetate. We need the other piece of our bread to close in our sandwich, right? What we're gonna do now is go into the very back offset, copy and paste, and remember the color I like to use for my shakers is going to be a very light blue color. So with that being, with our new copy and paste selected, I'm gonna come up here into the color and I'm gonna change this over into a very light blue color. That's just gonna signify to me that this piece right here is going to be cut in acetate and or transparencies, whichever one you decide to use. Okay, we are gonna drag this over. Okay, the very next thing is, is we now have all the components to build our shaker sandwich. We have the backer, we have our donuts, we have the top acetate sheet to glue everything together for the sandwich. Now, in any shaker cake topper that you make, because your glue, no matter how clear the glue is, you're gonna be able to see that through your acetate because your acetate's clear, you wanna be able to hide the ugly. I love hiding ugly. So what you wanna do now is we are gonna come and click one donut, doesn't matter which one, we just wanna click one, copy and paste. Okay, this one right here, just like in my file right here, you're not gonna, you're maybe not be able to see it, but the very top piece is cut out on white glitter cardstock. So this grayish color that we have on the screen right now is technically plain white cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to this grayish color and I'm gonna turn this into a jet white color and I'm gonna drag this into my topper. Okay, and just, and just for giggles for right now because now we need to add some clouds, we can just take this sheet of acetate layer and we can arrange this to the back just so we can see what everything else looks like. Now what you wanna do is insert some clouds. So we're just gonna go into the images button, search up cloud and press enter and you just wanna insert the clouds that you like. I'm gonna insert a couple different clouds, and then once you're done doing that, you just wanna press view. Okay, I am going to make these smaller so they fit onto my screen. And I chose three different clouds because I want a little bit more movement in my shaker cake topper. Not that, you know, there's not enough movement <laughs> in the shaker, but I just want different, different elements for it. Okay, I want, all three of my clouds to be white glitter cardstock, just like in my cake topper. So I'm gonna select all three of my clouds and I'm gonna come over here, because they're all three different colors, your like little swatch turns into a question mark, that's okay, you're gonna click that and we're gonna choose the jet white color because that to me is going to be white glitter cardstock. 
And then I'm just gonna work on the left right now and I'm gonna resize my clouds to fit to the very bottom of my topper. Okay, I like the look of that. I'm very aware of where I'm placing my clouds because I definitely do not want to lose this small little rainbow right here. Okay, so everything I do to the left, I'm gonna do to the right. So I'm just gonna select my three clouds that I've placed, copy and paste, and then I'm gonna put this over here to the right. So now it looks like an even rainbow. And all my colors are being shown. I like the look of this. Now, technically the design process is over. However, there is one thing that I would like to know. When you make shaker cake toppers, and this is definitely a preference, not everyone does this, but I do. When you make any type of cake topper, there's always going to be a front. Then there's always going to be a back. When you do your backing, generally when you glue your cake topper, you have a cake topper stick because you're making a cake topper, right? But when you glue this on there, I used a clear acrylic cake stick, but if you were using a wooden one, you would be able to not only see the back of that wooden cake topper stick, but you would also be able to see the glue that you use to not only glue your cake topper together, but also the glue that you used for that cake stick. And personally to me, that's ugly and I don't like it. I love hiding the ugly, right? Which is the same exact portion of this right here. I wanna hide all that ugly. So what we want to do is we want to go all the way to the very back and find that one, that like milky white offset that we created. And we wanna copy and paste. Now for this particular one, I want it to be white glitter cardstock because I want it to match the front. So I'm gonna change this charcoal gray color over into white. Now this particular design is symmetrical. So doing this next step definitely isn't necessary. However, it's always good practice to do that because next time when you go to do another shaker cake topper, if you don't have a symmetrical design, then this next part's going to look really weird when you go to assemble it. But what you want to do for the very back piece that we have is you wanna come up here and to flip and flip horizontally. At this point, then what you can do is selecting everything that you've created for your cake topper and you can resize this to the size that you need. I am going to make this six inches wide. So I'm just going to resize this until my shaker topper is six inches wide. Okay, then when I have that done, all you need to do is press make. So your screen should look like this if you've created the exact cake topper that I'm making. You should have a couple pieces of white plain cardstock. These pieces right here. You should have a layer of white glitter cardstock and then all your rainbow colors that you need. Remember though, that this very light blue piece is going to be clear acetate or transparencies. That's what's gonna give us the shaker look. Now, I did notice for this particular design, if you made it the same size as me, you're left with things that like, you, you are looking at it going, gosh, this is gonna waste some paper. I honestly, you're gonna waste paper. So in order to not waste paper, let's move our cutouts over and we're gonna just turn this one upside down and you can see that these are not touching, right? We don't want anything to touch, but we're gonna be able to move some stuff around. So let's go to map three. We're gonna drag this down and we're gonna click these three dots, move object, and let's move it to mat one and press confirm. Then we can use this uh, turning arrow and we can just rearrange this. Ooh, I think we could probably get two more cutouts. So let's select both of these pieces right here. Three dots, move object, go to the first mat and press confirm. And now, originally what the Cricut told us is that we needed three sheets of plain cardstock, but in all actuality, you need one full sheet of 12 by 12 plain cardstock and then you need one little piece of scrap cardstock. So we just saved a whole sheet and then some by moving our cut images over to save some room. Okay, now what you wanna do is go turn on your Cricut and let's cut this out.
Okay, so when you have everything cut out, this is what it should look like. The other supplies that you're going to need is going to be a cake stick. I'm going to be using a clear acrylic cake stick that you can find at my cardstock warehouse. And then also I have some shaker elements. These right here are just some plastic beads that I stole from my daughter and to make friendship bracelets and all obviously all in the rainbow theme to fill up my shaker. Glitter would obviously work for this project too, but I am just going to be using the beads. I personally am going to be using this particular cardstock glue because it is my favorite glue out there. And then this is some silicone glue I use to glue down my acetate. I rebottle it into something that looks like this just because the needle is a little bit more finer tipped and not as large as what the bottle is. Okay, generally what I say when gluing on your donuts is to use silicone glue because it's a gap filler and uh, your like shaker elements won't leak out. However, for this particular project, because I'm using thicker pieces of glitter like these beads, I'm not worried about it slipping through the cracks of my shaker. So I am pretty much going to use cardstock glue for this entire project. Okay, the very first thing you wanna do is taking the back, this white backer, what you're going to do is take one of your donuts, flip it over, and you want to put glue around the entire shaker portion. So the entire donut portion of your topper, we're gonna to go around every single arch. Okay, so I have glue on my entire white backer. Okay, now what you wanna do is line this up into your very back white, okay? And if you're having trouble lining it up, you just wanna lift it up and set these down. Okay, before the very back dries with that donut, I am going to lay down some glue in between and I'm going to put in my rainbow color pieces. So right here, because I wanna make sure that this is all glued and spaced perfectly. And in order to do that, we have to glue down our pieces. Okay, look at how stinking cute that is. Isn't that turning out so cute? Just looks like a very basic rainbow, but we're gonna make it even better. Okay, now that we have this glued down, what you wanna do is now put glue only on your donut. Okay, when you have that glued, then you just want to put in another one of your donuts on top, and then you're going to line up your white with the white that you already have laid down. This is why I put the colored portion in so you can make sure and have everything lining up perfectly. So when we glue on the very top layer, you're not gonna have anything misaligned or looking funky. Doing the same thing, we are gonna keep going until we got all of our donuts glued. Okay, so it's definitely not gonna look like a whole lot when you're facing it, but if you turn it to the side, you will see that there is definitely some depth in that to where you're gonna be able to see that this is going to be a shaker. Okay, now what you wanna do is taking your shaker elements, I'm gonna put some beads inside only the red. Now this one's gonna be hard because we got so many different colors going on. You just wanna put your color, the color of your choice inside the color that you're gonna be using. Okay, when you have your shaker filled up with all of your beads, what you wanna do is use your silicone glue and you want to go just like we did when we were using the cardstock glue to glue our donuts you're going to put this glue all over the white portion of our shaker. Okay, I have silicone glue on every single portion of my white donuts. So then what I'm gonna do is putting down our sheet of acetate. You wanna make sure not slide this around a lot when you glue it, so then you won't have like smears on your acetate. So you wanna start on the corner, make sure it's lined up, and then press down, not wiggling this around too much. Okay, then taking some type of pen or if you had like these to push down, then what you want to do is just take your a pen and push your acetate onto the white donut. This is giving your shaker a really good seal. Okay, do not pick up your shaker because you probably did have a little bit of silicone glue that went over off to the sides. Don't pick up your shaker and move your contents around because then you're gonna have your glue stuck to some of your shaker elements and it won't move very much. So we just wanna keep it like this. 
Okay, then what you want to do is, I'm going just to take my, cr my cardstock glue for this and you wanna glue your glitter, white glitter cardstock on top of your sheet of acetate. When you have that done, because we are gluing on top of the acetate, you wanna make sure that you don't wiggle this around a whole lot. We're just gonna lay this down onto the corners. Then using your pen and you just want to tack down your glitter cardstock, making sure not sliding it around a lot so we don't leave any type of haze anywhere. Okay, we wanna to continue to let this dry, making sure that that silicone glue dries really nice and then we don't have any issues with the shaker not being able to shake. Okay, I am just going to take my clouds that I cut out. Okay, I've decided to give a little bit more dimension to my shaker cake, take cake topper. So I'm gonna use some foam squares to glue on my clouds. Okay, so I would prefer if you waited until all of this glue was dry before flipping this over. However, I am going to flip it over anyway, so doing it real fluid motion, we're gonna move this over to the side. Okay, the very back portion, if you had hot glue, then use hot glue, but I only have the silicone glue for right now heated up. So to make this a cake topper, what you wanna do is put some silicone glue on the back of your topper. Now, generally when we are gluing our cake sticks, you want to put your cake topper in their center. However, in the center is where the uh, little cutout is for your rainbow. And I don't want you to be able to see your cake topper stick when it's inserted into a cake. So I'm gonna put it over to the side and then using more silicone glue, all I'm gonna do is put this all over the back of my cake topper. I'm also gonna do it on the back of my stick. Then I'm gonna take my very back piece, that one that is just a plain white car glitter cardstock, and I'm gonna put this on the back of my cake topper. And we're gonna push it down, sandwich it all down. So now, although the front does not have a shaker rainbow, it has some white glitter cardstock, so it looks still really good. And then when we flip this over, this is what our front looks like. That is absolute perfection. All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create, and I'll see you later.